Nice bolo tie, Stan. Thanks. Bolo ties are really in right now. It's cool you have one. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back for another edition of SMB, a South Park review, where me and my bros and amigos like to break down South Park for you in linear fashion. And we are back for more. We're not going to delay too long today. We're going to get right into it. It's time! Ladies and gentlemen, we're back for another edition of SMB, of course. This is Cash for Gold. And it is the second episode of season 16 and the 225th overall episode of South Park as it first aired on March 21st, 2012. Yeah, you know what you did, Skype. In this episode itself, Cartman launches his own shopping channel. <laughs> you so like Stan, a young child? <laughs> so Stan, Shelly, Shelly, uh, Sharon, and Red, what? are seen visiting Marvin Marsh, a.k.a. Dan's grandfather, who has been placed in a retirement home. Uh, Randy attempts to politely leave by claiming they cannot stay for dinner as the food allegedly gives Sharon diarrhea. Marvin tells him to wait, saying he has a gift for his grandson. He gives it to Stan, who opens it. Turns out to be a gold, turquoise, and diamond-studded bolo tie. Randy asks Marvin how much he spent on the tie. He says, $6,000. And angering Randy as Randy thinks he should be saving his retirement money so the family can have it when he dies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sharon mentions that tomorrow is picture day and that Stan can wear the tie there. Marvin proclaims how happy that will make him and Stan does not think much of it, but he goes ahead and puts a tie on because he wants to make his grandfather happy. So, uh... Well, Dad, it was really great seeing you. We'd love to stay for dinner, but the food here gives Sharon diarrhea. What? Randy? Shh, just trying to leave without being rude. Hold on, hold on just a second. I got a present for my grandson. I got a present for my grandson. So, yes, they're at the retirement home. He's in his wheelchair. Number one grandpa cup. Come here, Billy. Come here, Billy. You've grown up, Billy. It's time for you to have something expensive and flashy to impress all the ladies. So now, maybe you think you're getting a watch here. You know, maybe you think you're uh, getting a watch. Would be sick, right? A nice watch, or even a not even a wrist watch. Could be a pocket watch, like old school, something like that too. Like, how good. you doing, Shawnee? With a little chain. Uh -oh. Um, <laughs> uh, maybe got him some. Maybe you're thinking I'll get my grandson some cool sunglasses. You know, that's flashy too, right? They can wear that on. Cool blah, 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 blah. would be pretty dope. Yeah, but no, that's not. Go ahead and open it, Stan. Stan gets a Oh, look at that. Bolo a bolo tie. Isn't that beautiful, Stan? So there's the bolo tie. Yeah. <laughs> look, <laughs> I'm not hating because I wear bow ties and I wear regular ties, but God damn it, I would not wear a bolo tie. <laughs> no, not doing that. Not doing that. You? Would you wear the bolo tie? But well, you're from Fuck Texas, no, so I don't know. It might be a little bit. Oh, okay. Go ahead. No. <laughs> but I mean, there, there are. I've seen in Texas, there are some pretty sick ass fucking bolo ties. That one looks pretty bad, but I've seen some pretty sick ones. Some pretty cool cowboy looking ones that are pretty sick. So, I mean, I guess if you it find, if, yeah, if you see a sick ass bolo tie, you can't hate. Can he? So Just here's like of course. Uh, no, sorry. Um, bow tie, sick ass bow tie or tie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so here's now, of course, Randy going to react to this. That's fourteen karat gold with turquoise and real diamonds. Grandpa, how much did you spend on that? Six thousand dollars. Six thousand? It's worth fifty thousand. It's worth. It's worth fifty thousand. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We'll get no, to that it's worth fifty thousand. Uh, it's worth fifty thousand. I got scammed. The Jewels and Gems Shopping Network said so. Dad, you shouldn't be spending your retirement money on frivolous things. You should be saving it for when you die. <laughs> oh okay. my gosh! Go ahead. The shopping network is fucked up. <laughs> I know. We'll get there. Let's wait. Let's yeah, hold we'll, off get we'll get I'm there. I'm sorry. We'll get there. I'm jumping ahead. That's our money! 
It's gorgeous, <laughs> Dad. Thank you. Oh, and tomorrow's picture day at school. Stan can wear it for his photos. Oh, that's wonderful. That'll make me feel really good. Look at Randy's face. Who's Stan? <laughs> Who's Stan? He said. <laughs> Look at Randy's face. He's so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Uh, it's funny all right all right so moving on here into the episode now the next day as stan is at the bus stop with his friends the boys are seen with him and stan is wearing his bow tie and then there's kind of like a, an awkward moment and then he goes and then Carmen just goes nice bow tie stan <laughs> <laughs> uh so after Stan sees through his sarcasm, Cartburn simply begins insulting the tie and calls it, it's fucking gay as feck. It's fucking gay as feck. <laughs> Stan says he knows that and he wishes his grandfather would simply give him money as a gift and instead, you know, because he's kind of opposed to these material items. Kyle recommends, though, taking it to a cash for gold place. So let's talk about cash for gold. So they, the boys enter a cash for gold, which is a pawn shop, if you will, if, uh, Cash for gold, pawn. They mm -hmm. usually are all in, all encompassed, right? All encompassed. They'll um, buy your shit. The, You'll get money. Yep. They'll buy your shit. Or they'll pawn it to you, depending on how much it's worth. Um, an employee, after confirming that the boys did not steal uh, the item, offers them $15 for the item, much to their dismay. Kyle proclaims that the guy is scamming them, so they take the tie and leave. They go into another cash for gold where the employee offers them $8 for the tie. After Stan angrily mentions that this is the same tie worn by King Henry V, she offers him $9. <laughs> $9. And then this is where it gets weird. They reject the offer and leave, and they once again to sell it the tie to a Taco, Taco Bell, Bell, which is also a cash for gold. It's a cash for gold and a Taco Bell. And the most then, amazing thing ever. Right, and the Taco Bell employee offers him a six-layer burrito. <laughs> All right, seven. <laughs> That's right. And Kyle says, You guys don't even have for six player burritos. And he said, All right, Devin. All right, Devin. <laughs> <laughs> that is ridiculous. They're just making up new things on the fly. All right, let's jump back into the episode here so we can talk about it some more. Nice bolo ties, Dan. Thanks. Bolo ties are really in right now. It's cool you have one. Look, it was a gift from my grandpa, okay? And it cost a lot of money. No, dude, it's badass. It happens to be worth $6,000. That was six grand? Yeah, dude, it's a recreation of the bolo tie worn by King Henry V. Dude, it's fucking gay as fuck. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> the look but on his face. I fucking know. <laughs> I know. I know. He said. He said. <laughs> I really wish if my grandpa wanted to give me something, he'd just give me the money. Why don't you take it to one of those pawn places? Every two blocks you see a guy with a sign that says cash for gold and jewelry. So as we mentioned, cash for gold and jewelry. So we'll jump ahead. So here's the first pawn shop. As you see, cash for gold sign there. Cash for gold. We buy gold. And of course, there's always those sign, sign spinners. spinners. Yeah. <laughs> sign spinner. You gotta have the sign spinner. You gotta have the sign spinner. You gotta have them there. <laughs> Here's the guy looking at it. They're thinking, the look on their faces, they think they're going to get a bunch of money. They're all smiling and shit. You didn't steal this, did you? <laughs> no, my grandpa gave it to me as a present. But it's worth so much, I feel really bad accepting it. So I just want the cash. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting because the logic behind that, and I understand, like, there are people that have that logic. Like, this thing is so valuable that I'm afraid I'm going to lose it. So rather than have the item, I would rather just have money. You know what I mean? I kind of the same. Like, if I had something that expensive, I don't think I'd ever take it with me or do anything mm. with it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I agree. People are like, oh, you have all those Sega Saturn games. What, did you did you ship them or did you have the movers move them? Like, fuck no, dude. Are you crazy? <laughs> I moved them. <laughs> I'm not letting anybody touch my stuff. Are you kidding me? I don't want to get broken or anything, bro. Like, fuck. Get back my games and they're all cracked. Well, anyway... This theme, this uh, offer is kind of cracked. It's 14 karat gold, diamond, and turquoise. I'll give you $15. $15. Now, you know, I'm so, kind of curious right now. What's the going rate for one carat of gold right now in the United States? So today's gold prices. 24 carat. Oh, oh, my bad. My bad. Go ahead. 
Uh, actually, it was only 14. Um, so today's gold price though is a twenty three two thousand three hundred six hundred dollars. Um, so let's see, that they only hit. Per... That, that sounds about that. that so the right. estimated the estimated value of fourteen carats right now would be sixty five dollars and thirty seven cents. An ounce. Um, uh, per well, it's twenty three hundred dollars. Uh, is the gold price today? Uh, that would be estimated payable pure gold content point zero three T per ounce per ounces. Yep, so it's per ounce. Uh, estimated purity fifty three point six. Estimated payable silver value zero dollars. Um, treatment charge fifty dollars. Oh, that's why you know why they offered him fifteen dollars because the final estimated value after all the refining charges fifteen dollars and eleven cents. <laughs> yeah, so they're right on the fucking to, money. So I, I looked into this while I was watching the episode, and it's crazy what the shopping network does. When and I'll point out everything that Stan talks about. There's actual like there's a lot of to it. So that's probably a silver like plate very thinly coated with 14 karat gold and those diamonds have probably gone through a lot of shit to get enhanced and all of that stuff so they're very 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 cheap same with that emerald yeah no so yeah, yeah, I'm, just so saying yeah 15. I'm just saying it's right on the money it's interesting that even this right episode came right this episode came out in march of 2020 of 2012 it's now may of 2024 and gold the gold price is still pretty you know pretty the same which is why people say invest in gold and silver right because they hold value yeah they um gold is a very very good asset yeah very very good well <laughs> so excuse me sorry man sorry darren fuck you darren um so th I, I talked about this a while ago like russia traded a bunch of oil for gold bro right so okay Anyway, well, back to let's, the let's so here's the here's the guy uh, basically or uh, here's Kyle angrily saying, dude, we're getting scammed. Oh. What? Yeah. That cost my grandpa six thousand dollars. <laughs> Those are real diamonds on the outside. Yeah, I can't really make anything on the diamonds. I'd have to send it to a smelter, have it all smelted down for the gold. Probably could make a ten dollar profit. Fifteen bucks? Dude, this guy's trying to rook us. We can go someplace else. I like the terminology. This guy's trying to rook us. <laughs> it's funny. He, even even kids can like tell when they're being they, scammed. They trust, yeah, they don't trust yeah. anybody. Yeah, I'm not getting taken advantage of. You may suck our collective power share. <laughs> <laughs> Get him, Clarvis. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and fucking gentlemen. Suck our collective badge. This is Eric Cartman from South Park, Colorado. This is Eric Cartman. This is Eric Cartman. <laughs> Man, that new version must have sucked balls. Exactly. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you listening to another edition of SMB at South Park, where you can check out linktr.w slash South Park Pod, as well as you can go ahead and visit us on Twitter at South Park Pods with an S, South Park Podcast on Instagram, South Park Pod on YouTube, Facebook, and everywhere else. Oh, oh, fuck yeah. All right, back to the episode here. <laughs> Here's the boys now as they uh, make their way... Boggle. As they make their way into the uh, next portion of the cash for gold uh, schemes. Cash for gold. Don't worry, there's got to be another cash for gold place around here somewhere. Yep, right next yeah, yeah, here's one. <laughs> Walk right in. These are real diamonds, right? So now you got this lady. She's looking so at it. Here she asks if these are real diamonds. What the fuck? I mean, I'm like, oh, bro, yeah, they're 13 carat. <laughs> okay, $8. $8. This is the same bolo tie worn by King Henry V. Oh, $9. $9. <laughs> and then this is where it gets odd. <laughs> Taco, Be Taco Bell. Okay, let's go. Cash for gold and jewelry. We buy gold. Taco Bell. And then they got tacos three for one ninety nine on the left, and we buy gold for the right. That three for one ninety nine deal is not available anymore, and that's sad. So, like, okay, low key, 
if I brought in like gold or something to Taco Bell and they're like, here's a 40, here's a 13, no, here's a $14,000 gift card to Taco Bell. Taco Bell for life for your gold. I'd be like, uh, 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 maybe. (laughs) Uh, uh, Maybe. Maybe. I think, uh, welcome to Taco Bell. Would you like to try our Doritos Locos tacos? I want to see how much you'll give me for this golden turquoise diamond bolo. Uh, <laughs> this guy pulls out a mod. Like, <laughs> like he's been, he does this shit. Oh, okay, I'm taking a look. <laughs> the Taco Bell fucking employee. Yeah, we train our, we train our employees not only to or take uh, Taco Bell orders, uh, but we also give them a brand new skill and teach them how to be diamond and gold certificationers. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever those people are called. Brokers. 14 karat gold, catch you $14 a gram on the open market. Got so a- it was $14 a gram on the open market back then, so that means... About four grams here. Four grams. It's not really worth my time. I guess I can give you a six-layer burrito for it. <laughs> All right, let's let's do some quick math. How While you're doing some quick grams? math, let's we're going to continue on here. Let's go ahead and we'll check out now Kyle's response. A six-layer burrito? You guys don't even make a six-layer burrito. <laughs> All right, a seven-layer burrito. But that's as high as I'm going. Well, and there's that. So what? It, what is announced today of gold? Well, I, uh, two thousand three hundred and sixty dollars is the gold price today. Um, so at fourteen dollars an ounce, that's three hundred and thirty-six. So an ounce is twenty-four grams, right? I I don't Where's... know. I, I'm not good at math. You're the math guy. What are you asking me? <laughs> I'm literally looking at a, a internet website where I typed so, in one 14 carat. That's it. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Holy shit. An ounce of gold back then? Today? That's some good shit. That's a... Okay. That, fuck. That that ounce today would be worth $2,000. So it, it went up about 300 bucks. That's some good, uh, you know... Uh, over 10 no, years that, small in, that one, small small increments of uh you know interest that it built as far as in value right because if you look or sorry 12 years so if we take uh you said two thousand dollars so we'll just be, we'll say 2400 we'll just be e- easy 2400 divided by 14 years i mean that's an average of 171 dollars increase in um, a year um divide that by 12 months and we're talking about that's an average of about fourteen dollars in interest gain, or fourteen dollars a month. It's averaged over the last twelve Fucking years. Gold, bro. Gold. Um. All right, moving back here now. As you, we're gonna get, we'll get back into the episode here shortly, but we want to talk about it just a bit more. So the boys now are seen sitting on the sidewalk, confused, stand dumbfounded as to how someone could possibly be scammed into paying a large sum for a very cheap item. The scene then switches to a television channel switching to the J and G shopping network. Dean, an employee is selling seen selling overpriced gold earrings to a old lady on the phone. The scene then switches back to the boys who are now watching this channel. And Kyle mentions that what the channel is doing is, you know, fucked up and horrible. Stan (laughs) once again, dumbfounded asks how they get away with scamming elderly people. And Cartman reveals a seemingly complex, but in reality, simple mathematical formula that the shopping network uses to make money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Which we then cut over to, we hear Marvin was on the phone with Dean attempting to buy a Topaz studded copper ring as a gift for Stan, Gosh. causing Stan to quickly leave and visit his camp- grandfather at the retirement home. That's got to be fucked up. Like you're watching the TV and you That's can hear your parent, up, your family right? member being scammed. That's so Buying horrible. Buying a copper ring. Copper two paws. God damn. <laughs> Go down to Crystal oh. Magic down the street and just buy that copper ring and topaz for like 12 bucks. <laughs> right. No, it'd probably be like 50 bucks. Check that. 50 bucks. Uh, so here's it. the home shopping network, Jewelry Bonanza with Dean. Way complete with today's broadcast. You want to get in on these deals, call now. Next item is, this is item number 4578111. He's just making up numbers here. 
as I find it funny here that the guy just make it up numbers four, five, seven, eight, one, one, one. <laughs> two two million dollars. Two this thing is worth two million dollars. Two million, but you can have it for eighty nine ninety five. That's easy that pay. Eighty easy pay. Because it's easy. Here we go. Look at these stunning earrings. These are genuine faux sapphire. Faux means Bo. fake. That, yeah, so that can, like, the, and it's, a, they, they say, what, 86 carat? 86 carat faux sapphire faux with sapphire. 14, 14 carat gold. gold. So, again, something else is worth 15 bucks. Uh, beautiful earrings, regular price, 6 million. Comes in one size. Comes in one size. Only one. Just one size. Her one earrings, size. 14 carat gold, 86 carat faux sapphire. Fo is a French word. It's got an X in it, but you don't even pronounce the X. How do you like that for prestigious? How do you like that for We're prestigious? For prestigious. <laughs> these earrings normally go for six million dollars. We're gonna sell these today for three hundred twenty dollars. That's a steal. Now oh, there go the phones. They're lighting up. There go the phones. They're lighting up. They're lighting like because. We'll get to it here because you got old people just sitting around waiting to fucking call in. I believe we have a sale. Do we have a sale? Yep, let's get her on the line. Hello? Who am I speaking with? Uh -huh. And this is what you were talking about earlier. It starts with this guy and then the lady later on with the fucking woman in the pawn shop. You decided to give me a call and fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Vivian. Vivian, you just got a heck of a deal. What's your last name, sweetheart? Sweetheart. Oh, I can't remember. You can't remember. Well, can you remember your credit card number? Oh, that's horrible. Fuck. That's horrible. And then uh, she starts saying it. Right. Seven. Three, oh, three. seven, one. Oh, she's fancy, Scoop. She got that fucking... American Express. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Starting with the three, I think. I think three is American. No, it's three. It's either Discover or American Express. Three credit card. Credit card that starts it. American Express. I was right. Yeah. So she's got that American nice. Express. No, she ain't playing. She ain't playing around. She ain't playing around. She got cocaine money. Hold on, Vivian. We'll get you on with a rep. Take down that number. Thanks for shopping with us, and congratulations on the lovely 14-carat faux sapphire earrings. At that price, you practically stole them from us. Ouch. 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 That's terrible. So, of course, the boys are sitting at home. They see what's going on. Stan's mouth wide open. I told you guys, I've been watching all day. But how did they get away with that? This is a new time, a new era of science that only the smartest can comprehend. Okay, so this is this is fucking garbage. He's gonna pull out like a marker board here. Talking about this is good. For centuries, math. alchemists have tried to come up with the formula to make gold. Whoever could do it would, of course, become rich. And now, the chemical equation is right before our eyes. <laughs> here's the here it here's is. the here's the chemical equation. That's the chemical equation for gold. That's right. Guys with cash for gold signs gets you people's unwanted crappy jewelry, which when added to a cable-based shopping network divided by demented old people equals gold. gold. Equals. Kenny, will you tell Cartman to shut up? Shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> shut the fuck up, dude. Fuck asshole. You're a fucking oh, asshole. I'm an asshole, asshole for doing that. Oh my I'm god. I'm an asshole for doing that. <laughs> Wait, gotta watch that again. Let's do that. Let's watch that back. Kenny, will you tell Cartman to shut up? Oh, I'm an asshole for doing that. <laughs> right. Oh God, you... that's, why are you calling an asshole? He's just doing math. Like, that's not fucked right? up. He calls it out. It's the truth. He's got the equation. He's got the equation. All right, here's some more. Believe this. Somebody's about to get this $20,000 topaz and copper ring for just 4000 bucks. We've got our buyer on the line. You buying this as a gift, sir? No, I'm buying it as a gift. <laughs> <laughs> For my, my grandson, Billy. For my grandson, Billy. <laughs> Grandpa! Grandpa! <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, as we mentioned, he runs off. <laughs> Fucking gosh. Wouldn't you? Like, I would, too. 
if my if, right. if I could run that, I mean, yeah, fuck yeah. Right. Red Wall, stop. <laughs> So as now, we're going to jump back to the Jewelry Bonanza channel here. But in this case here, we see uh, Marvin watching the aforementioned shopping network in his room. Stan is seen outside his door. After telling his grandfather that Shelly will not like the necklace he wants to buy for her, Marvin reveals that he can no longer remember his beloved dog's face, which saddens him. Stan, suddenly motivated, says he will take care of this, presumably referring to stopping the shopping network from scamming people. <laughs> While this is going on, Cartman discovered the equation. So Cartman at a South Park Ent Elementary is attempting to sell old jewelry. Leroy Jenkins sells him a gold ring for $3. Cartman happily proclaims to Butters that they have crappy jewelry, and now all they need is old people to buy it. Of course, Cartman being, uh, Butters being there with the sign. <laughs> Bro, did, 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 did Cartman come up with an equation or did he come up with opportunity? He came up with, well, he figured out what the equation was and thus is now taking advantage of said mm -hmm. opportunity mm -hmm. that it's been presented in front of him. <laughs> and Cartman, having no moral compass in general, scamming old people, he doesn't care. He don't care. He don't care. It's right up his alley. So here's uh, mm -hmm. the jewelry bonanza now. And as we mentioned, Marvin in his room watching it itself. This can go for $14.95 easy pay. Easy pay, we call it that to save you time. EZ is an abbreviation of easy. $14.95 e $14 easy pay. Easy pay and what's that? Oh, what's that? We can't call it easy pay? That's okay. Well, it's E pay. We're dropping the Z. That's how much time we're saving you. Okay, all right, I just got word we are dropping the Z from Easy Pay. It's now just ePay. By using the word ePay instead of taking all that time to say Easy Pay, we're saving you a second of time, and those seconds add up. Those seconds, those add, seconds up. add up. <laughs> it's interesting that, uh, you know, uh, older individuals, and I'm not stereotyping everyone, but, you know, at least we probably it's probably now shifted to more like Amazon buying and purchasing shit like that versus QVC shopping channels and whatnot. But it's interesting that people like this would sit around and watch the shopping channel and just as they're coming, their life is coming to an end. They just they're just buying shit off TV. <laughs> like <laughs> if I had that much money, if I had well, I mean, but I'm just saying, if I had this much money to buy four thousand dollars here, six thousand dollars there, like I would just be going on vacations and shit, bro. <laughs> traveling like what what i'm not gonna fucking buy these crappy gifts off the qvc channel you kidding me you kidding me go ahead and try it say epay five thousand times that's five thousand <laughs> seconds nine hours we, we just, just saved, saved you. you here on j and g shopping network not wasting your time here you can't afford not to buy this one you don't have a lot of time left you don't Literally. have a lot of time pass left. this one down to your Literally. kids your grandkids show them your life had meaning grandpa fuck do you see that, Billy? That's an emerald on 14 karat gold. Don't you think your sister would like that? She doesn't like jewelry, Grandpa. Oh, this is where it's going to get a little sad, though. Yeah. So prepare yourself, prepare yourself audience. Ha! Well, she will one day. She'll appreciate it. She's, she's just a baby, after all. She's not a baby, Grandpa. She's 13. Shelly's 13? Right. Right, boy. Man, oh, the uh, music and the music comes in. And everything. It, that's when the when the music when the music cues. Uh, it, it, it just uh, cuts. It fucking uh, cuts. It gets it you cuts. Deep. It gets you deep. It cuts hard. It gets you deep. Billy, did I ever Billy. tell you I used to have a border collie named Patches? Yes, Grandpa. I loved that dog. She always made me so happy. When she died, I, I didn't let myself get too sad because I thought, thought I'd always have the memory of her slobbering happy face. I mean, I'm not trying to like, I understand not getting another pet when you lose one because I haven't had one in like five or six years. But at this age, maybe somebody should have got him another fucking pet. <laughs> it's like, you know? but if you're if you're adding a dog or a cat to the equation. I mean, you got something potentially for 20 years of your life. Like, my dog Max was yeah. 
16 years of my life and when he passed dude it was hard it actually wrecked my dad right pretty hard so it 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 made him he went out and got a schizophrenic little mini australian (laughs) well i mean i I mean i mean i get what you're gonna say i I, what i what i guess what my point was here is i mean it's been enough time though right like (laughs) Mm -hmm. but but we he he didn't think it all the way through he got it from like pet smart or some shit right and that dog was schizophrenic he didn't do anything to train it and then we ended up having to give it away because <laughs> give him away i'm sorry because he was so crazy that t- he ate razor blades all right ladies and gentlemen my dog ate razor blade like shaving razor blades and lived he would eat tampons he would eat his own shit he i i could put him on a leash and that dude would run with me on my skateboard so fast for so long. It was insane, though. Like, he was a beast. But that dog was crazy. Like, he was fucking crazy. One day, I came outside, and he just had his head. Hey, buddy, I'm, I'm not trying All to right, I'm sorry. Here. I'm rambling. Yeah, I'm but we're, we're going on a huge tangent let's, here. <laughs> let's go back to the Fucking cut that. Fuck you, Darren. Um, so, uh, but yeah, my point is here, you know, obviously, you know, as you mentioned, you know, not going out and getting a dog right away, probably not the best option, yeah, but you it know, wasn't the he's, best option. but he, he took uh, it hard, dude. but he, his grandfather here has had, has not had that dog for so long that he's now starting to forget the dog. Um, oh, so I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying somebody over the years sort of got another dog or something, getting a robot right. dog. I don't know. Get him something. Get him a companion. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what she looked like, Billy. Oh. Stan now, of huh. course. And huh. Understanding that his grandfather's old. Don't worry, Grandpa. I'm going to take care of this. So Stan takes off now. Now, now the next, we jump over the next scene. Here's Cartman now. We see Butters holding the cash for gold sign. Uh, we see Cartman already decked out in some jewelry, kind of looking like a, a jewelry guy, a jewel guy. <laughs> hey, Craig, what's going on? Butters. Token, bet your mom had some old jewelry she wouldn't notice missing. He's all using the sign. Baby, you got those rhinestones in your earrings. How about some walking cash? This, I think, is right here. He's going to drop the sign, and Cartman yells at him for dropping the sign. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bidget. Yeah, a bidget, Butters. I can bidget, probably bidget. offer you a Butters, what the fuck? <laughs> Sorry, my arm's hurt. My arm's hurt. Pick the fucking sign up, Butters. This is a business. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh shit that's great oh shit yeah hold on unfor- one second uh, uh, nope i already i already responded maybe it's, we can nope. if, if you want to we can record another one with him uh no i've got to i'm not staying up <laughs> throw a late, bunch of the can i gotta oh, i gotta yeah, go to work tomorrow oh so. he said 11 so. my bad yeah anyway. um so here we go Hey, how much will you give me for this? Oh, uh, three bucks. Uh, okay. We got crappy jewelry, butters. Now all we need are some old people. So, does that mean Cartman's gonna? Well, I mean, we'll get to it here. Cartman's, I guess, is gonna be the one on TV, and Butters is the one that's gonna be manning the camera operations and all this stuff and the directing. <laughs> and, like, who's helping Cartman with that? Uh, it's okay. Butters. Is Butters? Here's uh this. We've just sold this bracelet to Miss Marcia Tubbs. Marsha, Marcia, thank Tubbs. you so much for your call. You just <laughs> got yourself a heck of a deal on this one. You there, Marsha? So this is what I was talking about earlier. This is where it's going to uh, attempt to be, uh, you know, uh, he's going to start making those remarks like, you just thought you'd give me a call and fuck me? Huh? I'm lost. Yes. This I'm is lost saying. walking on the freeway. <laughs> All right, you're lost walking on a freeway. Enjoy the Tiger's Eye Aquamarine bracelet. All right, okay, what should we do next? Freeway. Oh, I see one. I Here's a good one. Let me, let me, let me set the stage for you here. <laughs> let me set the stage for you here. Now, I like how he's going to call it 13 carat Panzoto Panzanite ring. <laughs> You're going to that to me. seniors <laughs> cocktail party. It's bingo night. Bingo You're looking night. for something okay. to wear. Okay. 
How about a 13 carat Panza Topanza night ring? Panzo Panzo Panza Panzo to rewind it. Rewind. No, no, I got it. That's it. Panzo Topanza night. That's what it is. Panzo Panzo Topanza night. Topanza night. Panzo Topanza night. Panzo Topanza night. 13 carat Panzo Topanza night ring. And and on the stage. And those subtle, your senior party. Right, right. The subtle, your senior party kind of thing. This is, oh, we got a caller already on this one. Hello, sir. You must be a fan of Panzo to Panzanite. Yeah, hi. Um, you should kill yourself. <laughs> What's that? I said you should kill yourself. What you do is sort of unjustifiable. And you know it's unjustifiable. That's right. Okay, so this is where Stan actually starts to. Let me, uh, let's back up here a little bit. Oh. Dean is seen once again selling an old woman a piece of overpriced jewelry. After he finalizes a deal, he then attempts to sell another piece of jewelry. However, this time the caller is Stan. And Stan claims that he should kill himself. That's what he's doing is unjustifiable and the very, very definition of evil. Dean Could tells he... him. Go ahead. Oh, no, I'm not bad. Dean tells him that he should not say these things because if he actually did, Stan would feel guilty for having indirectly caused his death. However, Stan responds by saying no. He actually would not feel bad at all and that he should kill himself. Uh, Dean threatens to then kill him. Dean threatens him with the lawsuit. However, Stan proclaims that he does not care that he only cares about his grandfather. After Dean attempts to lower the price of the threatened lawsuit, Stan then says, the price does not matter. The only way Dean can right his wrongs is to kill himself. And that Dean says, uh, saying those things are not funny. And Stan says, I'm not trying to be funny. Do it. And then he hangs up. <laughs> <laughs> just the, the, the sheer just, oh, he's just like, do it. Do it. Do it. Panzo to Panzanite. Yeah, hi. Um, you should kill yourself. <laughs> What's that? What's that? I said you should kill yourself. What you do is sort of unjustifiable. And you know it's unjustifiable. And you don't care. You're the definition of evil. Kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I dove into this in like the 90s. I think it was 96. I, I, I briefly looked at the article. They got into some trouble. And then I looked into it, and it and furthermore, they they were Who got selling into trouble. Uh, got into the trouble. shopping network, the shopping okay. network. Well, we'll say it because you're just saying they got into trouble. Oh my bad, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> so the shopping network got into trouble for yeah, what? Yeah, the, sh the the shopping network for selling you know really really cheap jewelry, overly. Um, so it breaks it down into like the carrots, the the fourteen karat gold as being plate uh, silver plated thinly plated mm. to you know and, and stuff like these the more uh color enhancement and stuff the diamond goes through the cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper it gets throughout yep. like and then that's right. what the and they were selling like this guy who would do it uh 35,000 what 2395 20 what i really what I really also like about this scene is I believe they just stay on this camera shot of him holding the ring the whole time while he's having this conversation. Okay, we're going to sell this ring for just thirty-seven ninety-five. dollars How's that? I just read that the day shopping networks oh, no, make most of their hand. money is on the day seniors pick up social security checks. Kill yourself. Kill yourself. All right, well, you shouldn't say things like that because... Some host of a jewelry channel sure might up and do it, and then you'd feel really bad. Now they've got this they'd hand. They'd really bad. <laughs> this hand that's just like modeling it and shit. Where'd the hand come from? <laughs> I don't know. No, I wouldn't. Yes, you would. No, no I because I really want you to kill yourself. All right, well, how about this? If a jewelry network host goes home tonight and blows his brains out, you might be liable. That's a lawsuit worth... Two point seven million dollars. How's that sound? <laughs> Two point seven million dollars. How's that sound? How's that sound? <laughs> I don't care what happens to me. I care about my grandfather. You morally empty, corrupted maggot. 
All right, I tell you what, I'll bring the lawsuit down to twenty nine thirty nine. And then it doesn't matter what price you put on any. <laughs> There's like this round robin thing of jewelry being shown now while he's it's, talking. It's just going. It's just going. <laughs> and of course, Stan. Now he's going to like get real serious. Uh. Oh, this, he's about to get hey, savage. Your only chance to right the wrongs you've done and repay all the elderly people whose lives you've destroyed is to kill yourself. Uh, yeah. Maybe not. Eh, well, you know what? I wouldn't care, but at the same time, I would. It's like, damn. He maybe there was another way he could have paid everybody back or like refunded some of the, the something. Ow. Yeah. But this is of course kids, so they're going to the extreme, right? Yeah, right, right. Well, you'd think it's funny, but that's that's calling up and telling someone to kill themselves. That's not a joke. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. Do it. Do it. <laughs> 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 Fucking stand, bro. Fucking do, do it. it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it now. Do, do it. it now. All right. So he, as do we it. mentioned, here's Cartman as he sets up his own home shopping network channel. Do it. Okay. Next item. <laughs> next time we're gonna do. Okay. Look. Look. It's called the Old People's Shopping Network. O P S N. <laughs> uh, it's called. Air Eric's Jewelry Calvacade with Eric. This is so fucked up how it's just targeting the elder. Elderly. He's, but. he's just, he's in a shitty fucking uh, basement. Okay, look, oh, he's got his box. Eric's baby clothes. That's on television, by the way. Uh, he's got some candles, and then he's got, like, a couple mannequins, displays. He's he's, he's going to sell. He's going to sell some stuff here. It was 5 uh, five, five, two, one, six, uh, seven, seven, five, five. This is, oh my god, look at this, you guys. Look at it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is 200 wait, carat Brazilian wait. emerald and plasticine ring. I'm going to start the bidding for this ring at, um, let's see. 200 carat Brazilian plasticine <laughs> emerald ring. Plasticine. Eight billion dollars. Eight, Eight billion dollars opening billion. bid. We've got to sell this ring today. Tell you what, I'm going to take it down a little. We're going to drop that price to... $75.95. At this price, it's not going to last for long. Oh, we got a call already, Butters? Butters? Looks like, did we sell it? Yep. $75.95, that's what the ring just sold for. Do we have the buyer on the line? Hello? That is ridiculous. Okay, first off, kudos to Cartman for being able to get a fucking TV show on public access that fast, okay? That, that yeah. <laughs> like Give that. Give kudos for that. That, so, that bro. And, and also, it looks like they're filming on remote location. So they're sending a satellite signal back to the hub where the QVC channel is. I mean, you gotta you gotta give you gotta give Butters credit for his ingenuity here and techno this technological is, prowess to set this all up for Carmen. This is some professional ass fucking shit. That's what I'm saying, bro. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. He's on location. He's remote. I'd be like, I'd be the guy back at the hub, be like, okay, you're coming back to break now. <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. Bring it back. Hello? Yes, you just bought this lovely 200 carat ring. How do you feel, Mrs? This is Mrs. Appleby on 24 Palmark Lane. Can I ask you something, Mrs. Appleby? Do you like fucking little boys? <laughs> <laughs> you figured you just call, you saw, you flipped the channel, call me, and thought you'd fuck me. What? What? I'm sorry? Just wondering if you fuck kids all the time, because that's what you just did with this deal. You just got an $8 billion ring for $75.95. You fucked me good, Mrs. Appleby. Congratulations, ma'am. Uh. Thank you. Were you just flipping through the channels and saw me selling this ring and thought, mm, I'd like to fuck that kid? I <laughs> <laughs> uh, isn't she lost on the freeway? No, this is a different chick. This is a different this is, chick. Oh, right, right, right. This is a different <laughs> Cartman is sad, bro. Anyway, she says, no, I thought I'd buy it from my granddaughter. Thought it'd be a lovely gift for my granddaughter, Jessica. She's captain of the debate team at Jefferson High School. Okay, and thanks for shopping with us. I gotta go get the taste of old lady dick out of my mouth. He still thinks ladies at bars. <laughs> <laughs> Even though Butters has been kicked in, right. what do we learn? Well, we learned that women do not have balls. And then later on, he well, it's it's he goes back and forth, right? Because what do we learn? We well, we learned that women do not have balls. We sure did. 
Oh. Sure did. Goodbye. Dad. Man, that's good acting. I should get an award. <laughs> Freaking God. <laughs> He should, honestly. Like, he should win a Grammy. Like, oh, like let's a be Grammy's real for about music. It. A Grammy's for music. Uh, uh, Emmy. Yeah, that would be good. An Emmy, daytime television. Yeah. Golden Globe Award? No, that's for yeah. like good people. Broadway. Bleh. Tony <laughs> or Golden Globes is for movies. I'm sorry too. It's like it's like if you win a Golden Globe, then you're probably gonna win an Oscar too. Um. Okay. So back into this. So Cartman, as you saw, was showing there at the Old People's Network. Now Stan. Kyle and Kenny are seen at a gold refining factory. So basically what they're doing is they're going on a mission to see where this all stems from, how this all starts. Stan angrily criticizes a man who appears to be higher up in the company. The man proclaims that it's not his fault. The people that advertise the cash for gold for services. So afterwards, they're seen criticizing the employees who flip signs advertising the cash for gold services. And they call them fat cats who take advantage of the elderly. Butters interjects, revealing that they do not make that much money. Another boy claims that they should yell at those who melt down the gold house. Kyle interjects saying that, that that is, in fact, their fault. Yet another employee proclaims that they are both wrong. That is, in fact, the fault of the, and I'm just saying what it is, the fact of the individuals who live in the country who are Indian descent who are India, who manufacture the jewelry. Uh, the others <laughs> then agree to all of this. Uh, so we'll show a little bit of that as far as uh, their interactions with all these cash for gold people. Look, kid, if you got a beef with the system, you're talking to the wrong people. All we do is smelter down what we get from the cash for gold places. Yeah? Well, there's an old Hindu saying, whoever smelt it, dealt it. Yeah! <laughs> we aren't the ones who denied you what your jewelry was really worth. The Hindu saying is actually, mai nahi chahatapani. What does that mean? Whoever denied it. Supplied it. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. All right, so here's them now going to talk to the Cash for Gold sign flippers. You are the scums of the earth. Oh Old god. people are victimized by shopping networks, and you kick back in your fat cat mansions making billions. <laughs> Butters. We aren't <laughs> making that much, fellas. You're not? No, you're not? Why don't you yell at the people who melt the gold down? The old Hindu saying is whoever smelt it, dealt it. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. right. Nuh-uh. It's whoever denied it, supplied it. You got it all wrong. The jewelry <laughs> that those shopping wrong. networks sell don't even come from us. So now, here's the new moniker. It's all made in India. Where those Hindu rhymes come from. What are you saying, Gustav? My God, do you mean? <laughs> that's Gustav? right. Whoever made the rhyme did the crime. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. That's actually fucking legit. That like, is Like, if legit. you think about it, and whoever, like, made, whoever, like, comes up with this idea and is like, dude, why does it smell? Whoever made the, whoever made the rhyme denied the crime. <laughs> <laughs> They're all shocked. Oh, oh, of course, here comes another gem here from South Park. Uh, you may have heard this in our uh, intros. The crime. Suck my bass. Suck my bass. Hello. Back. Oh, welcome. Welcome to Discount Jewelry Store. So now Cartman is going to the pawn store where he thinks he's going to try and get some good deals, but he's going to end up finding out he's getting fucked over too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, I'm running a resale business, but I can't get enough of people's unwanted crappy jewelry to keep up, so I'd like to buy some of yours. Oh, you do so good business. You're so clever. I get bad. Let's see, I'm gonna need some gold necklaces, diamond bracelets, and emerald earrings. Okay, what emerald do you like? Uh, I don't know, I guess I'll take that ring there. Oh, you make so good choice! Of course, she's placating to him the way that the Home Shopping yeah, Network yeah. people, you know, try to sell to the old people. Oh, it's beautiful! Look, it's beautiful! And uh, maybe I'll take that one for 300. Oh, that's the best one! You're so clever! You take advantage of my low prices! Now this is where she is makes the mistake because she doesn't know who Eric Cartman is. How about that Tanzanite bracelet for nine ninety five? You got good eye. You so clever. I getting taken advantage. You like a fucking Asian lady? And boom, Cartman's like, what? <laughs> uh, way. You can't con a con artist here, son. What'd you say? <laughs> I know. Boy. You walk by my store and you say, oh, there's a nice Asian lady. I think I go in and I fuck her. 
You Asian lady fucker, you. Wait a minute. Uh, How much do you pay for this stuff? Oh, I pay thousands, and you come here and fuck me. Okay, quit the act. I'm not fucking you, and you know it. No, no, you fuck me. No, no, you fuck me. Fuck you. <laughs> Carmen. No, you fuck me. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, good. Fuck ye. Right. right? So Cartman now, just like the rest of the boys, everyone's going to India, right? That's where mm -hmm. we're heading next. That, I mean, because that's the only logical place to go. The boys right. want to go there. That'd be, Kyle's, that'd be Kyle, Stan, and Kenny because they want to find out where the process starts. And now Cartman's like, wait a minute. I got to go to India because, like, we got to go to the source. So they're seen in India attempting to make a deal with an indie manufacturing company to cut out the middleman and buy jewelry directly from them. At this point, Cartman then notices Stan, Kyle, and Kenny yelling at one of the child employees about scamming Stan's grandfather. Cartman angrily confronts them, saying that they are trying to steal his idea. <laughs> Stan claims that they simply want retribution for his grandfather. The employee offers him a gold necklace. However, he rejects it. The employee then puts the necklace into a bag and drops it into a box. And then they show the endless loop of selling, melting down, being made into jewelry, and then sold once again. And then it's documented ending with the employee giving Stan a jewel-encrusted gold picture frame. So basically, they show that it just continues the same process over and over and over, right? Somebody buys the jewelry. They don't like the gift. They sell it to cash for gold pawn places. The cash for gold pawn places then smelt it down. Then they, they, sell the, they take the gold away and they take all the emeralds and the diamonds and the rubies or whatever and then they send it back over to a jewelry station and then this whole cycle continues to repeat itself of course this portion of the episode comes with the famous uh south park background music that you might have heard when selecting your character in the south park games <laughs> and then it just continues to amp up as this whole thing breaks down. All right, let's fucking jump into it. banger, bro. <laughs> it's a banger. It is a fucking banger. That was Love actually a drop. No, that was a drop that I had. Like oh, I wasn't, I was I'm sorry. Uh, oh, okay. It's it's part of the same episode. That's why I was playing it. <laughs> All right, here's them in India. <clears throat> And then, of course, Cartman's like, excuse me, excuse me. That means Butters has to get the sign. <laughs> he, dra <laughs> he dragged Butters all the way to India with him just to hold the sign. <laughs> what a manipulative son of a bitch. And it's raining. All right, so now they go into this factory where you can see, I guess... It would be considered children, yeah, huh? Ch like a sweatshop with kids in it. Yeah. Yeah. Fucked up. So now they're sitting there working. They're putting all this crappy jewelry you that see, they're I'm looking to cut out the middleman. I want to buy my jewelry direct from you so that... Motherfuckers! And then there, of course, is Kyle, Keeney, and Stan. And now Stan's going <laughs> to yell at this kid. You should Cassie. be ashamed of the people in America that you are exploiting. How dare you take advantage of those less fortunate? You dirty, double-crossing asshole! <clears throat> you trying to cut me out, huh? You guys stole my formula, then tried to fuck me- Butters! Sorry! <laughs> and then tried to fuck me out of your business! We're not fucking you, they're fucking Stan's grandpa! No, they're yeah, getting I mean... fucked by Asian ladies! Somebody is at the head of all this, and somebody needs to pay! All I somebody. want is some goddamn retribution for my goddamn grandpa! I like when Stan uses the goddamn lines and when he's pissed, right? I right, want right. And some goddamn, ch I want a goddamn chicken sandwich and some goddamn fries, you fucking goobacks. Ah, 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 ah. Stanley Marsh. Ah, ah. Now he wants some goddamn retribution for his goddamn grandfather. So this is how the cycle begins. Shows him. Hold no, not a diamond and gold necklace! He's gonna put it in the bag and show him how this all works. Come with me, he What's says. What's he doing? Before we continue on, Darren, I'm gonna leave it up to you how much you wanna leave this, much of this song in this fucking episode, but on the podcast, you're getting everything here. Oh, man, all right. So, before we wrap this up here, as we see Stan and his grandfather there on the bench, we're coming into the closing portion of this episode now. Uh, Stan is now seen in the park with his grandfather, Marvin telling him about what happened. 
Stan then gives him a present, and uh, when he opens it, revealing the gold picture frame with a picture of his beloved dog, Patches. This makes Marvin extremely happy. Marvin seemingly having forgotten that he was the one who bought Stan the bolo tie, says, Stan, where'd you get that? Or that bolo tie is fucking gay as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and Stan says that he will no oh, longer wear it. Right. And Marvin's like, that's probably a good idea. Um, and then we're going to go back to the J and G shopping channel. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to go ahead and go through the whole thing, but basically Dean's Dean's going to kill himself. Uh, so let's get into that here Christ. on the, con on the conclusion of this episode of SMB as South Park review. So then we went to India, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I yeah. guess Grandpa. never been there before. And we basically learned that whoever smelt it, denied it and rhymed it actually dealt it. Oh, uh, sounds like you had a fun weekend. Yeah, I guess so. Jeez. Anyway, grandpa, I wanted to give you something. Oh, for me? So Grandpa now unwraps the present. Oh. Looks at the picture. My God. Look how happy he's going to be. There she is. Old Patches. There's Look at that. Look how young he even looks there. He's not in a wheelchair, standing up, got his dog. Looks so happy. He kind of looks the same. Well, I'm just saying, though, he's not, you know, immobile. Is that slobbering happy face? Thank you, Billy. That means a lot. And then there's like this long oh, pause. My favorite part. There's this, this long pause and then... Billy, that, that bolo tie you're wearing? Yeah? I don't know where you got that, but it's fucking gay as fuck. <laughs> cool, I, I won't wear it anymore. That's a good idea. <laughs> that's, that's a good idea, Billy. He's the one that bought it for him. <laughs> okay, let's go to the, ra the final ra recap here with the J&G Home Shopping Network as an old person has caught on to Stan's plan and calls in and tells Dean to kill himself. Mm-hmm. Folks, these are not your average Peridot Crapanite earrings. Peridot these are 18 karat gold. And we got, oh, do we have a buyer on the line? Hello? What are you waiting for? <laughs> kill yourself. <laughs> All right, God damn it! we got another comedian. Ever since that little kid called up, now everybody wants to call and tell me I should kill myself. He was right. Do it. Yeah. Folks, this he is an 800 right. number. Every time you call and tell me to kill myself, it's costing us $2.36. So now how about a caller who wants to buy jewelry? Yes, hello, sir? You're too scared to do it, aren't you? Yeah. You don't have the you're balls. God damn you it, I'm not balls. scared to do it. Nah, you're scared. <laughs> you got, you got lady, lady balls. balls. Lady balls. <laughs> Hello? I'm calling about the Peridot earrings. <laughs> this is funny. She calls yeah, it pretends. This is great. This is great. <laughs> she calls it pretends she's interested in the ring or whatever and then tells him to kill himself. Yes, ma'am. It look good on your dead body. Why don't you <laughs> kill yourself? All right, that, that's that. That's freaking savage, old woman. You came right in. They look good on your Ooh. dead body. <laughs> Want to go ahead and kill yourself? All right, so Dean goes ahead and does it. That there's the the straw that broke the camel's back. Oh, oh. that's right. That's right. He puts the the trigger in his mouth. Should I put the trigger in your mouth and pull it? I got a gun right here. What do you think about that? Pull the trigger. Put perfect. it against your temple and pull the trigger. <laughs> this is a long pause. <laughs> and there's blood splattered all over this uh, display. And uh, that is how the episode ends with the credits and everything. That just goes off Jeez, the air like it. this. With the oh, background and the blood right. and everything. It was it was great. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this side of the episode. We're going to come on back now on the other side for more, some more trivia, pop culture, and more. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, shout out to our sponsors. LinkTR.EE slash South Park Pod is where you can check out our landing pages. You can also sign up on Spreaker and use that as a uh, you know podcast catcher. And what you do, we get a little bit more revenue every time you listen to the episode. If not, no worries. Hit that like and subscribe button. Share whatever podcast catcher you use. That like and subscribe button right here on YouTube. 
You'll be notified when more information like this drops as long as you click that little bell. Click the little bell. Ding-a-ling, ding-a-ling, ding-a-ling. That's South Park Pods on X with the... That's South Park Pods with S on X, Twitter, and South Park Podcast on Instagram. Ladies and gentlemen, me and Scoop are not collectively the 2022 Red Rocks Day 1 South Park Trivia Champion. We are not no, trivia. Not. Gods. Yeah. But Scoop's going to do his best. Scoop, serve I'm us gonna up. Try. I'm going to try. Some triv. Love you, dear. In the beginning of the scene where Stan Marsh and his grandfather are talking in the park, a squirrel wearing a black top hat and bow tie can be seen running behind the bench. Now, I did, I, oh, that, I'm going to have to go back and see that. That's, <clears throat> this is the third time the credits have rolled in silence. The second time right. being in, you're getting old. And the first time being in, free your whales yak. Free or Wills Yak. It's, it's still funny to me, damn it. Still funny. <laughs> the J and G shopping network is satire of the real home shopping networks such as QVC and HSN. The old Hindu saying recited by the men at the refinery actually means I don't want water. Oh, it is claimed that the bolo tie gifted to Stan at the beginning of the episode is a recreation of the bolo tie worn by King Henry V. However, bolo ties were invented in the 1940s, and King Henry was only alive from the years 1386 and 1422. This just adds to the falsity of the jewelry channel's claims. And that's what they got in trouble for. While watching the J&G Shopping Network and seeing how the scam works against elderly women, Cartman shows the other boys his derived formula for making money out of gold. The people holding the cash for gold signs attract people to sell unwanted crappy jewelry, which then added to the cable-based shopping network, which is then divided by demented old people, all equals gold. gold. Yeah, it's sound <laughs> knowledge. It is sound factual knowledge. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the trivia for this episode. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am not a man who likes to bring the pain in the digital marketing game. I'm, I don't solicit those picks to get your click, 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 clicks. But it's time for some pop, 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 pop culture. With me, Matt Schaefer. Uh, Sean Penn's Oscar for Best Actor for his role in Milk is seen in the pile of gold being melted at the smelting pot. And finally, the music that plays during the montage of the gold going from India to America and back is a crude vocal cover, presumably performed by Matt Stone and Trey Parker, of the Office theme from the soundtrack of the 1985 movie Brazil. The theme, of course, as I mentioned, was used in South Park, the fractured butthole heard when the new kid is filling out a section of his character sheet. Ladies and gentlemen, that's your pop culture. All right. And finally, let's get into some continuity here. Marvin Marsh is seen out of his wheelchair for the second time when he is seen sitting on a bench with Stan. The first time was in death when he attempted to hang himself. Marvin Marsh's source of wealth for Stan's bolo tie likely comes from the $10,000 prize money he won in Cartman's Mom is Still a Dirty Slut. That's right, for America's Funniest Home Videos. <laughs> and finally, this is Marvin Marsh's first appearance since the fantastic Easter, Easter special. That's your continuity, people. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, continuity pre references to pop culture trivia. Your full recap. Scoop, what did you like about this show, Sean? Uh, the savagery of Cartman. Just the absolute... Or no, no, I'm sorry. The absolute savagery of Stan in the... When, when he calls. It's just absolutely nuts. Same with Cartman throughout this episode. He's just... He just woke up and chose fucking violence in this episode and then we got um all of uh just everything that goes on with the shopping network and all that satire that it's it, it, this episode i mean you know it's, it's pretty good it's all right 
I agree. I liked um, Cartman and Butter's relationship this episode once again, as we've been talking about stemming back even in the last season. Mm-hmm. The dynamic between Butters and Cartman has even evolved so more, f- so much to where Cartman can manipulate Butters, but he doesn't manipulate him to the point where Car- Butters is going to fire back too much. But right. they're kind of linked to, with each other now in that regard when it comes to little, little schemes. Um, <laughs> I like and that. in this case, and in this case, Butters is, of course, holding the cash for gold sign throughout the episode. Gets taken to India. You've got Cartman flipping the script on the whole cash for gold scene because he tries to play the whole, you fuck me, I fuck you. And then when another, when the Asian pawnbroker woman does it to him, he realizes, wait a minute, I've been getting fucked the whole time. <laughs> the whole I like. I like the song that they made. That song is a banger. It is a banger. Like a, it is a banger. You can play that while you're driving. It gets even more crude. I don't know. Did you hear some of the words they said? I didn't catch what exactly they were saying, but they were saying some words and there were some like words or something. There's they're not, there's not there's actual no words. words. It's, no, it's, just, oh, okay. it's just sounds. Yeah. It's just them. Yeah, just them making sounds with their mouth. Okay. It's like when we do that song, buddy, buddy, ski, ski. You know what I mean? They're just making buddy, buddy. They're just making sounds. Uh, yeah. I like that dynamic. I liked, um, I mean, you know, I think it would have been better maybe in the end if Stan had actually been able to make an impact on the business that he was trying to take down because in the end, nothing happened really. All that happened was is he got a picture and of course he wanted retribution for his grandfather. So I guess he kind of got that by giving him to making him happy. But the business continued on. Even if that guy, Dean, killed himself, somebody else will just step right in and take his place. Mm -hmm. So the jewelry industry itself didn't really get taken down. And nothing really got exposed either. Uh, I mean, we did. We got exposed as a viewer, if you didn't know at that time how the business worked. But nothing really is no actual, like, happy ending in the world of South Park, really. Never. Not really. Uh, I I liked his grandfather, of course, making light of the fact at the end of the episode, his bolo ties fucking gay as fuck and that was of course the second time it was said because cartman said it's fucking gay as fuck dude after he sarcastically talks about bolo ties are really in <laughs> i forgot about that. that that's that's my i forgot about my favorite part of the episode <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah and then i just like randy's response hey you're not supposed to be spending that money it's supposed to be for us for the family when you die that's, <laughs> that's our money, money. <laughs> that's my money yeah exactly uh so just randy's crass toward his uh his father itself yeah all in all i like mm-hmm. this episode cash for cold is definitely a top 100 episode it's a good episode oh, as sure. far as when it comes to the later season is concerned uh and all i i enjoyed it well ladies and gentlemen mm-hmm. that's gonna do it yep. for another edition of smb a south South-y. park review coming up next week it's faith healing what happens when the boys will not let a trend die? They will not. They're not going to submit to planking. They're not going to submit to sign bunny or whatever the other one was. They're, they want a faith hill. They're going to faith hill till they die. That's coming up next week on another edition of SMV, a South Park South Review. Park with you. Oh, 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 oh,